Survivors, Flood, Mississippi, 1927, Chapter 12 Molly shrank from the cold deluge of water, bending nearly double as she ran. Maybe the old man would let them stay here until the rain lit up. Maybe they could even sleep one night under his roof, or at least in his shed. Garrett was a little ways ahead of her. The cloud burst continued, big drops of rain falling in nearly solid sheets. The ground streamed with little rivulets of water rushing downhill. Molly slid on the muddy path, bumping into Garrett from behind. They waded in beside the raft, almost knee-deep in water. It's come up nearly a foot since we got here, Garrett said, breathing hard. Molly tried to remember how far out of the water they had pulled the raft. It was nearly floating now, only two or three of the logs solidly on the land. Let's drag it up the path, Molly said, leaning close so he could hear her over the rain. The path is too steep, Garrett shouted back. Let's pull it around that way. I saw a place where we can get it all the way up into the yard, I think. Molly glanced up. The sky was so dark with clouds that it felt like evening, even though she knew it was still midday. Lightning crackled to life overhead, turning the world into a flickering nightmare for a few seconds. The boom of thunder was quick and loud. The lightning was striking close by. Molly shivered. Take that side, Garrett was shouting. She took hold of the rope. Garrett waded out, pulling the raft with him. Molly kept up, walking parallel to him, staying in the shallows. There, Garrett shouted the word and pointed. Molly nodded. She could see the place he was talking about. Where the island curved away from them, the land rose more gradually, and there was almost no brush to block the way. As they followed the skirt of the island, the slow current began to push the raft along. Molly waded in thigh-deep water. Garrett was in nearly to his waist. Molly found herself staring at the body of the dead snake lying still now in the middle of the raft. Garrett suddenly slipped and went on her. Molly froze for an instant. Then he bobbed up, swimming a few strokes to catch hold of the side of the raft. He dragged himself onto it and faced her. Just a little farther, he was gesturing ahead. Molly pulled hard. Without Garrett on the far side, the raft was clumsy and heavy. As she waded along, making slower progress, Garrett was securing their makeshift paddle and his pole. He reached out to lift the body of the snake. It was limp. limp. Should we keep it? Molly shook her head. The stew in her belly made it an easy decision. She thought about the warm little house as she pulled her feet free of the deep mud. Step by step. She wished they should, could just go in out of the pouring rain and sleep until tomorrow. The raft snagged at the branches of a weeping willow that grew just at the high water mark. Come deeper, just a step or two, Garrett yelled over a roll of thunder. Molly pushed the raft gently away from herself, felling the water deepen, feeling the water deepen as she cleared the willow branches. The current caught the raft and floated it forward around the end of the island. Just a little farther, Garrett shouted over the rain. Can you do it alone? Molly nodded, slogging through the water, almost waist-deep now. A massive rumble caught her attention, and she waited for the sky to flash blue-white veins of lightning. The rumble rose steadily. "'What's that?' Garrett shouted. Molly looked up at him. He had twisted around, facing upriver. The rumble was louder than the rain now, and the sound was rising. Molly slipped and stumbled backward. She regained her balance and lurched forward, catching the edge of the raft. The strange sound was swelling, filling the air with an odd vibration that grated on Molly's ears. Oh, my God, Garrett sh yelled. A levee broke somewhere above us. A second later, in the murky, false dusk of the storm, Molly understood. She had time to whirl toward the island, then to turn back. She felt Garrett's hand close on her wrist. Then the raft was rising, spinning. Molly felt the current swirling around her. Legs lifting her with the raft as the crest rose beneath them. Garrett dragged her forward onto the logs. Hang on, he screamed. Molly turned up river, watching helplessly as a wall of dark water came toward them. One instant she was staring at it, the next it was shoving them forward, the logs bunching under the sudden force, pinching her fingers painfully. She cried out, then coughed when the dirty water closed over her head, filling her mouth. She felt the rough bark slide against the palms of her hands as the water overpowered her, prying her from the raft. There was a pressure in her lungs, and her pulse pounded against her temples, fighting the current. Molly swam aimlessly, fighting against frantically, trying to find the surface. Her legs scraped hard against something, and it felt as if her skin was being torn. She opened her eyes and closed them again, terrified by the darkness of the water, wrenching around, swimming in another direction. Molly could feel the incredible strength of the current, tumbling her over and over like a bull of cotton in the wind. It was impossible to tell which was up. A stinging pain in her left hand made Molly double up. Her whole body curled into a crescent. The pain seemed to spread from her hand up her arm as the water churned, tumbling her over. When her head rose above the surface, it took Molly an instant to realize it. She pulled in a deep breath, then coughed. 
gasping and choking she tilted her head back keeping her face out of the water the incredible roaring sound had faded but she could still hear it a stunning bright flash of red made her aware that her eyes were closed and she opened them in time to see the next bolt of lightning streak the sky the ache in her hand was receding she managed to drag in another shuddering breath and began to tread water something nudged at her shoulders and she spun around her arms failing terrified it was another snake hoping desperately that it was garrett's helping hand it was neither she looked past the curling root that had touched her to see a half-submerged tree trunk it was enormous an old magnolia its april blo blooms half open perched on a slender branch was a mockingbird it canted its head to one side its bead-like eyes fixed upon her as she struggled to pull herself up out of the water when her clutching hands came within a few feet of it it flew away aching and coughing molly worked her way upward and collapsed on the broad trunk after a time she raised her head and looked around hoping to see garrett nearby when she didn't she sat up careful of her balance turning up river then down she felt a cold fear settling low in her stomach she couldn't see the raft or garrett or even the old cabin on its little island of high ground a spatter of rain stung her face when the crest hit them garrett had tried hard to hold on to molly the water had been incredibly strong, yanking him backward, then forward again. The raft logs had bruised his ribs and scraped deep gouges on his belly. Somehow he had hung on. Now, crouched on the raft, blinking as he tried to see through the rain, Garrett clenched his jaw to keep his teeth from chattering. Molly had been right with him. She had been next to him, and he had reached out to grab her wrist. How had this happened? How had the river taken her so far from him that he couldn't spot her at all? Molly, he shouted. His throat was tight and his voice sounded rough. Molly! He tried to shout louder. There was no answer. Garrett twisted around on the raft, looking in one direction, then another. Lightning brightened the sky, then winked out. In every direction he could see only the desolate brown water. What if she had drowned? The thought pushed its way into his mind, and he tried to argue with it. Of course she hadn't drowned. Molly swam better than he did. Unless she had hit her head on the raft or something else, and... Be still, he commanded his thoughts. Purposefully, he stood up and balanced carefully on the raft. All he could see were boards and branches. Molly's faded yellow dress was nowhere in sight. The rain shortened his vision, he knew. He shouted her name again, then again. He shouted until his voice began to crack and weaken. Then he forced himself to calm down and take stock. The surge had passed, and the water was moving slowly all around him now. He still had his pole. But Molly's bag was gone, he noticed. The water had somehow loosened the knots. She would be upset. Her mother couldn't easily spare a good kitchen knife. Garrett lifted his gaze to the water. The river was full of the wreckage it had caused. Garrett stared at a fan of long planks jutting up at a ridiculous angle. Whatever they were attached to had sunk. He untied the drawer front and paddled slowly toward them left-handed, his right hand too blistered to use much. When he was close enough, he could see the scalloped edge of a roof tin of a tin roof. The weight of the metal had pulled the the wood beneath the surface. Garrett pushed the drawer front hard against the side of the planks, backing the raft away a few feet. Molly Molly Garrett cleared his throat, then kept shouting. Where should he look? Where would the water have taken her? He felt muddled as though he had wakened from a too long sleep. The crest had taken everything familiar away and replaced it with this. He scanned the slow, moving water, looking eastward through the still sprinkling rain. Molly! This time his voice clattered off the planks, coming back to him an instant later. Not quite an echo, just a strange, splintered shout. He turned his head and called her name once more. This time a bird burst out of the branches of a drowned tree. Garrett looked up to watch it fly, then sat down slowly, wondering why he hadn't noticed before. He was looking up at the trees again. The water was lower here. Garrett scrambled to the center of the raft, laying the drawer front down and untying his pole. He started to turn back, then decided to anchor the drawer front to the raft. The crest had come without warning, and there were levees all along the river. Any one of them could break. Trembling as the rain fell harder, Garrett gingerly pushed the pole into the water, careful of his blisters. When it hit bottom, he found himself fighting tears. He shook his head, forcing himself to stop. There was no reason to cry. He refused to believe that Molly was dead. He began to pull the raft along, then stopped to tear a strip from the shirt tail to pad his blistered right hand. He passed through the wreckage, making his way around an upside-down barn, 
than a thirty-foot length of picket fence. Here in the slower water he could see more than bo boards and trees. He spotted a mass of red feathers, all moving in the current like slender leaves in a breeze. Going past, he saw the curved neck and sightless eyes of the drowned rooster. A little farther on, pulling around a fallen oak tree, the raft bumped into a drowned mule. Garrett shoved the raft backward and skirted the floating animal. Molly, he barely whispered her name this time, pulling in a huge breath and refusing to look backward at the mule, Garrett pulled onward. Molly, this time his voice worked. Molly, he managed to shout. Molly! He roared her name at the rain, at the death-filled water, at the darkening sky, and this time he heard an answer.